video is going to be on creatine. Uh, seems like most of my clients, um, they have this cynical kind of skepticism towards creatine or they don't know what they're really taking. Uh, so I'm about to shed some light on creatine and maybe debunk some of the, some of the myths uh, associated with it. So basically what, what is creatine? Creatine is not an amino acid, but it's a nitrogen containing compound called an amine. Uh, it's similar to an amino acid. It's actually derived from two of them. And uh, it's formed in your body, inside of your liver and your kidneys. So the nutrient is conditional. So it kind of varies from person to person. The only way to tell is to be able to supplement with creatine to see how much intramuscular creatine you already have. If it does a lot for you, that means uh, genetically you don't hold a lot of intramuscular creatine. If it doesn't do anything for you, genetically you already have super high levels. So it's not, you know, supplementing with it isn't really gonna do that much for you. Okay, so the way that creatine works, uh, your body uses, a, its primary energy source is to burn ATP for energy. It's the ATP uh, creatine energy system. And so the way that works is adenosine triphosphate, ATP, there's three phosphate ions, and when your brain sends a signal to your muscles to contract, your, uh, one of those phosphate ions breaks off. So ATP now is ADP, and then one free phosphate ion. The release causes energy, and that's why your muscles contract. Okay, now we have a free uh, phosphate ion in ADP, and we need to replenish so that ATP can be resynthesized and that we can uh, recover for, um, for more mu muscle contraction or for more energy. And so what the creatine does is attaches to that phosphate ion, forming phosphocreatine, and shuttles it back to create ATP. So that is the ATP creatine energy system. Your creatine attaches to the, uh, the free phosphate and it shuttles it back to resynthesize ATP. Now, as a result, it improves your maximal force of uh, muscle contraction, isometric muscle contraction. It improves your muscular strength and endurance in isotonic uh, muscle contraction. It improves your overall energy, um, your maximal overall energy output, followed by short bouts of recovery. Without that recovery, creatine really isn't going to do anything. That's why it doesn't do a whole lot for runners or uh, aerobic exercise. Uh, so with that time to recover is when creatine resynthesizes ATP. Now, most of that strength, the majority of that strength is accredited to water retention. Now, this is a huge myth. This, uh, I want to kind of debunk this right now. Uh, everyone thinks, that, oh, you're going to take creatine, you're going to hold all this water. Well, that's true, uh, but I feel like most people misinterpret the meaning of that. So yes, when you take creatine, that creatine holds on to a water molecule and it gets inside of the cell. It makes the cell bigger, okay? Kind of like gravity, the bigger a planet is, the stronger it's gonna pull. The bigger your cell is, the harder it's gonna contract, the stronger you're gonna be. Now, you only have creatine inside of your muscles inside of your urine and inside your liver and kidneys. You don't hold subcutaneous creatine, so you're not gonna hold subcutaneous water. Now, the myths that go along with this, okay, some people do start taking creatine and they blow. Now, there's a million things that could cause you to hold subcutaneous water. Uh, some of the big ones are an influx in carbohydrates. Some people start taking creatine because they want to up their strength, so they start eating more. And that influx in carbohydrate is gonna cause you uh, to hold some subcutaneous water. Too much sodium in your diet can make you uh, hold subcutaneous water. Not enough potassium in your diet can make you hold subcutaneous water. Not drinking enough water can make you hold subcutaneous water. So this myth about creatine, uh, like I'm gonna hold water, I'm gonna look fat, I'm gonna look bloated, that's not the case. Uh, it's probably uh, the other factors in your diet that are causing it. Um, Creatine loading. Uh, there's a, been a lot of research done on creatine loading. Most people say, oh, you don't need to load, you don't need to load. Um, and that's true, you don't need to, but it is effective and it does work because the way creatine works is your, your body doesn't use it until your muscles are completely saturated with it. Once your body is saturated with creatine, then it's gonna start uh, to work. It's not like caffeine where you can take it and then you're gonna feel the effects uh, because you just took it. Creatine, once your body's completely saturated with it, then it's gonna start to work. Uh, loading is just gonna increase that, uh, increase the time to which you saturate your body. Um, if, if you're not patient and you want it to happen very quickly, you can load. Uh, some people have side effects like, uh, you know, 
you know, stomach issues, digestive issues, some people get crazy diarrhea. So, I mean, it varies from person to person. Does loading help? It could. Um, is it necessary? Not, you know, it's not really necessary. Uh, but yes, it is effective. Now, what kind of creatine should you take? There's a million different kind of creatines. Uh, creatine phosphate, creatine citrate, creatine ethyl ester, creatine monohydrate, creatine uh, malate, creatine pyruvate, creatine gluconate, alpha ketoglutarate. There's a million kinds of creatines, and they're basically all going to do the same thing because creatine, intramuscular creatine is the same. By attaching these different molecules, these different esters, the only thing it's going to do is alter the absorption rate or the water solubility level. As far as intramuscular creatine, it's all the same. So what do I take? Creatine monohydrate. Why? Because it's easy, it's simple, flavorless, colorless, odorless, and it's cheap. Five grams a day and you're good. You know, for 15, 20 bucks, you can get like a freaking year's supply of it. Or, I mean, you could buy more expensive stuff, you know, uh, creocline creatine, um, creatine ethyl esters, where they basically attach an alcohol derivative ester to it to uh, alter the level of absorption rate. But what it all comes down to is it's the same thing once it's intramuscular creatine. The stores are the exact same thing. It's, gonna, it's not going to be more or less beneficial. It's only going to uh, differ the absorption rate. So if you, you know, if it comes down to a money thing, uh, if, if money's not a problem for you, go ahead and use creatine ethyl ester. It's just a lot more expensive. Another one that uh, is popular and kind of controversial is creatine with insulin modulators. For example, something like Celtec, which is basically creatine and carbs. Studies have shown that creatine does get loaded more efficiently with a carbohydrate source. Am I telling you to go out and buy Cell tech or go out and buy, you know, you know, MHP's tract or any any kind of uh, creatine product that has carbs with it. Uh, not necessarily. You can if you prefer that. Uh, but creatine being loaded with juice or any sort of simple uh, simple carbohydrate is has been shown to be just as effective. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of your call. Uh, it, it's a very safe supplement. Safe for kids, safe for adults. Um, if you're looking to improve your athletic ability, improve your strength, improve your recovery time, creatine is a great way to go. Should you take creatine? I don't see why not. Uh, but then again, it all comes down to personal preference. So hopefully these uh, tips and this information helped and uh, kind of steer you in the right direction and uh, you, know, you decide whether you want to take creatine. So anyways, I'm Brian Martinez coming from Athletes Nutrition and Local Fit. And thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you next time.